We actually started this IPv6, uh, to, let's say talking about this IPv6 back uh, in let's say August 2018 and uh, it took about um, around a year to like go for a commercial deployment let's say so we started commercial deployment from the August 19. The reason that we started this IPv6 is you know like uh, we already like in a condition of running out of this IPv4 address. and. Uh, to overcome this, we have been putting uh, the CGNAT heavily, very heavily into our data centers uh, for this uh, broadband, uh, let's say, routers. And this is, uh, you know, like CGNAT, you will uh, eat up a huge capex as well. And also it reduces the user experience because of this double NAT, let's say, on a user side and on our data center router. And uh, so we want to put this uh, IPv6 so that we can get over of all these things. and. The another part is like we have a, a huge, uh, huge, let's say, content like Facebook and Google within our data centers, right, which are already ready in terms of serving V6. We uh, think that like this tag is pretty easy way to uh, just go around because uh, if you go with the, again this NAT kind of things, we need to you know uh, uh, do another level of research and keep uh, hardware's. Uh, for all those kind of to translate this paper and physics traffic, so uh, it, it will be easy uh, easy to go with the dual stack. So we have uh, we have chosen this thing. I think it's uh, too early to be uh, to build IPv6 uh, network only as of now. So uh, what we are thinking is, yeah, in future maybe we can do IPv6 only network when like you know all the contents uh, are migrate are uh, let's say ready for v six. Uh, until that, I think this dual stacks will carry on. Uh, the first, the very first, like the challenge is to get the knowledge, and you know to get get used to it with uh, our tech within our tech team. So what it is like, we start uh, exploring about the IPv6, uh, both self and this attending this conference, and, and you know and doing some let's say uh, lab testing, rigorous lab testing. So after that, what we did is like uh, we enable a small uh, within a small group like our tech people's uh, groups and in a home network and within an office network, and we validate everything. So that's how we started. And for the commercial deployment, how we started is like first we uh, enable V6 uh, to our upstream network. So let's say it's IP transit. Uh, so we just uh, break through our V6 prefixes into global routing table. And then we enable uh, this V6 into our IP core network in a data center. And then we peer with the CDNs. And we make like this all CDNs capable of this, um, exchanging a V6 traffic. And then coming down to network, then we enable in our, let's say, uh, BNGs and gateways and down to MPLS and then to all this, you know, access networks and finally to the users. After deployment, doing all this deployment, we also seen some improvements in the performance as well. Uh, like and we clearly see the latency difference between uh, above, like say around 11 milliseconds uh, with V4 and V6 for the same, let's say, you know, destinations. So the region uh, with, uh, which I, I could explore is like uh, V4 and V6 uh, will take uh, different parts to reach the destinations. And, and apart from that, like V4 uh, is heavily loaded with policy kind of thing. You do lots of communities, you do lots of you know, BGP traffic engineering on this, and this kind of things is not happening on a V6 as it's, it's new. Uh, what I want to give a message to others is like we we have to deploy this V6 things, although it's a big, big things like initially when you are trying to do that. But uh, let's say uh, to, for the future internet, we have to deploy this protocol as, uh, as everybody is moving, moving towards this. And we have to uh, cast the same pace to be on a, let's say, on an industry and to also uh, rise the customer experience. So I, I will uh, highly recommend to deploy this, especially on a service provider network.